Hi, Jennifer. It's so great to have you on today's episode. Thank you for joining and thank you so much for wanting to be on my podcast. I, I really appreciate it. You, you have a very interesting story and I love talking to entrepreneurs such as yourself because even though you're this you know, very successful entrepreneur, we all have a story. So tell me your story. How did you get to where you are today? Um, it really was a little bit by chance <laughs> because <laughs> I had worked in business prior to having my children and I had done something completely different. I had worked a little bit in the financial industry and so I had stopped working when I got pregnant and was getting ready to have my twins. And oh, you have twins. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a big, that's a big thing for any mother. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It still is, even though they're 22 now. But um, so I, I did go to the Fashion Institute of Technology for a year, studied textiles, and I also studied um, some fashion courses. But ultimately... Uh, my degree was in something altogether different. And so when I began working, I started working in the marketing department of Knoll Furniture Company. So you would not think that I would have come full circle and ended up starting an apparel company. <laughs> I would not have thought that right. at any rate. So <laughs> it all began when I just became a really frustrated mother shopping all the time for my, my kids and not finding what I wanted in the stores, which was comfortable swimwear for them or swimwear that fit appropriately. It just was a nuisance every time I went shopping, whether it was getting ready to go away or getting ready for the summer or for their summer camps and just couldn't find swimwear that fit them. And this was more frustrating than you would think. But um, if it fit them in the waist, it was too big everywhere else. And if it was fitting them everywhere else, it kind of was too big in the waist. And a lot of my friends were going and buying these board shorts that their kids wanted, and then they'd go to the seamstress. So you're spending a lot of money on a board shirt, then you're, you're spending another 15 or $20 to get it taken in. And then it's going to fit for And they're going to grow out so, of it. Exactly. Right. They're going to grow out of it in a year. Right. <laughs> or less sometimes. Right. right. So, right. yeah. So we went on vacation and on this trip, they lost our luggage. And basically, in a nutshell, we went shopping when we arrived at our destination, which was in the Caribbean. And we went shopping for everybody's swimwear because we had not had the foresight to put our stuff in our carry-ons. And um, that, would, that did not happen again after that trip. <laughs> but we went shopping. And, of course, it was a little easier for my husband and I to find swimwear. But it was really a drag trying to find stuff for my kids at the few stores that were located in and around the resort. And this was really difficult and challenging, especially there were water slides there. So after that trip and having the difficulty that I did, the same thing, even more frustrating than in the stores when I would shop for them, I just had this epiphany one day and I thought to myself, when I was shopping, there would be these adjustable waist um, shorts and there'd be adjustable waist pants. And I don't know if you had shopped for your kids that way, but they would have things in the waistband that would make them a little tighter mm -hmm. so that when you would buy the long pants or the shorts that you'd want them to last a little bit longer, they'd have an adjustment. And I thought to myself, well, why hasn't anybody ever done this for swimwear? kind of seems like they would do that and make mom's right. lives a little bit simpler. So, right. I mean, cause I remember my son was like really tall and super skinny. So yep. I always have to go up a size, but then they were so big. So I had to get the adjustable waist. It was the only way I could have anything fit for him. 
Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, it kind of seems like a no brainer, but right. <laughs> yeah. A lot of boys, they tend to grow first taller before they fill out and right. catch up to their height. And that's the conundrum. Yep. And, and this is what I was constantly battling and why I designed the shorts the way I did. So I started to design a prototype. And when I finally was satisfied with what I had come up with, and then next it was the shopping of the fabric and having a prototype made. And when I was satisfied with that, it was trying to protect my intellectual property and finding a lawyer who could help me do that um, before then moving on and, and trying to find somebody who I could then go to market with because I had to find a manufacturer for my product. But this is how my whole business came to be and the whole idea behind my business was an adjustable waist board short which had not ever been made before all traditional board shorts are fixed waist which really doesn't make sense for a kid if you think about that no no of course not <laughs> yeah so you have been let's see you let's i'm looking at your bio here you received you have two patents and you have awards and you've been featured in L in style Vogue fashion week online, as well as other major press. They were worn throughout ghost shark an original sci-fi movie, which premiered in 2013 during shark week. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so how did all of that, like, like, how did you process all of that? Because that's, that's really incredible that you, took this idea that you had when you were on vacation in the Caribbean. And yeah, there's for people, if you've never been to the Caribbean, don't expect to go shopping down there because there's like no stores, right? People yeah. Don't, don't realize that. But um, like, how did you handle all of that featuring and, and like, wow, like this is really happening. I don't think you have time to stop and process it in the minute because you're so busy just moving and going and getting ready for the next thing and the next trade show and dealing with buyers. And it just all was, every piece was moving so fast that I never really had time to sit and contemplate what was really happening that it, it just all took off so quickly in the first year. I mean, right after i had my samples in hand which was in april right after i had come out with the idea the year before and got my samples from the first factory and then by that summer which was only three months later i was already in my first trade show in miami and then from that wow. trade show i was recruited from the from there to the next trade show in September, which was Surf Expo. And, and that's only, you know, another couple of months to get ready for that. And so, like I said, it just kept all going really quickly. And that was in 2011. So it was just all moving so quickly. And I had already applied for the patents with the lawyers and just from the next Surf Expo the following year, that's where I met the producer for the movie for sci-fi. And the movie just took a while to make and it didn't come out until the following year because that's how, you know, these right. independent films are. But, um, and then, you know, in between there were the magazine features. And then during that period of time is also when I had been asked to do, start to do run, runway uh, shows as well. Um, so oh, wow. I that's think exciting. Yeah. That's how the L features and, um, Vogue and all yeah. of those things came to be, um, from the runway shows, but there were also some other magazine features sprinkled in between just from the trade shows as well. So I think you're just so busy going from trade show to production, to designing, and taking care of a family and, and everything else in between, it's not like you sit down and you're thinking to yourself, oh, wow, this is what I'm doing and this is what's happening. 
It, it's just so busy and there's so many moving parts. Yeah, no, no, of course that makes sense. All <laughs> right. So on your website, or if you're okay going deep here, you have a quote here saying, enduring the aftermath of a terrorizing accident is detailed poignantly in your new book, Jennifer's new book. You will be hooked on the words detailing a split, sec split second horrific crash. Can you talk about that? Um, yes. Yeah, so it was a year after I actually had my product in the marketplace. Um, I had done now a few trade shows. I had done the one that I talked about in Miami a couple of times, and I had done Surf Expo a couple of times. And I just got back from Surf Expo. And now I was in the follow-up phase with the buyers. I literally had been home only one week from the trade show, maybe not even. It probably was about six days because I usually got home on a Sunday. And now it was the following Saturday. And we were getting ready for um, this really exciting family event that was going to take place a month later. And my kids had their suits that they wanted to try on. They had been altered and they were super excited because this was the very first time they had gone shopping for a fancy suit and picked them out themselves. And now they had to be altered their pants and their jackets and they were going to try them on again to make sure everything fit perfectly before we were having this event. So we took them to the store, my husband and I, and everything fit great. It didn't really take that long, but now I had some errands to run for myself and for the business. And I was on my way into town, which was only about five minutes away. So my husband said, I'm going to take the kids to lunch. And we decided to meet up shortly thereafter. So I went down the road and drove into town had parked my car and was waiting at the corner for the light to change. As you know, you stand there and you wait for that little box and the flashing light with the person in it to tell you to walk across the street. And it was literally in the middle of a Saturday. So there's people everywhere walking around. It was a really pretty day in the middle of the September. And the light turned and I started to cross the street. I was almost across the road. And all of a sudden, I just hear this huge noise, like a bang. And next thing I know, I'm on the ground in the street because I had zero clue what had happened. I'm kind of not really all the way conscious yet because it's all very disorienting. I had been knocked out of the crosswalk by somebody turning a very quick left. And they had been at the light rushing through before it turned red. And it's really kind of, I would say a little bit confusing how they didn't see me in the crosswalk when they're turning, but they turned left and they hit me in the hip and hit me out of the crosswalk. So and you I were hit by a car. Head and... Yes, I was hit. You by were hit a by car. a car. Mm -hmm. As a pedestrian. Mm. And oh my I goodness. landed on my head and my shoulder and yeah. And I woke up in the middle of the street. Oh my goodness. So what were the extent of your um, injuries? Um, there were a lot. Um, I had damage to my shoulder. I ended up with a traumatic brain injury that I found out mm. about later after some testing. And of course, that's a very traumatic thing to happen to anybody. So I was living with PTSD for quite a long time. And I mean, it still comes and goes. I don't know that that's something yeah. that's 
easily resolved to get rid of. It's a lot better yeah, than P it used to be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have PTSD, which doesn't appear it's from when I was 12 years old, um, from a tragedy that happened. And every now and then it pops up, but because of all the therapy that I went through, like, you know how to deal with it. But what is TBI? You say here, the strength of the human spirit needed to weather the storms of TBI and PTSD. So what, is, what does TBI mean? What does so that the stand TBI for? TBI is the traumatic brain injury. Oh, okay. Yep. And yes, um, sometimes it is an acronym, but um, I guess I, you know, okay. not everybody knows what that is. <laughs> it's okay. So you say, because you're talking, you have a, now has your book come out yet or is it going to be released? It was released the end of October. Okay. 2021, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So it's already so, on the market. All right. Awesome. So you say, um, okay, this is somebody else that is saying this and I didn't realize that. I apologize. It says, so this is Greg Nordfelt who endorsed your book. And he says, as a fellow TBI survivor, I recommend Jennifer's book to anyone in need of compassion, love, and the will to overcome life's obstacles. So what can you talk about and share some insight in your book that addresses that? Um, I would say that I discuss in my book what I had to go through to overcome what I faced and what I went through with my family um, during the healing process after the accident, um, what happened, which I did not explain, it is explained in the book, is that after my kids and my husband went to lunch, they decided um, that they were, well, actually they were going to have lunch in town. And so they came down the road and when they were coming to town, the road was already closed off because the accident had already happened. And so the ambulance had not even arrived, but the police were there. And so when they came up on the sidewalk to walk into town, somebody was already calling my husband to tell him, that I had been in this accident, but at the same time, they saw what was going on and came upon the accident. And I was still in the middle of the road and there was a doctor there who had heard the accident and he was helping me. So not only was it traumatic for me, but honestly, you can imagine this is extremely traumatic for two 13 year olds and my husband is oh well, having to see the yeah. aftermath of the accident. And so oh, your poor boys. Was, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what did they, how did you deal with that with them? Cause that must've been really traumatic. Um, yeah. So there was a lot of therapy involved. There was the struggles at time. The family um, had to learn to cope with this huge event that had disrupted and upended our lives. And it wasn't easy. It took a lot of understanding what each other was going through. It, it took a lot of them understanding what I was having to deal with um, from my PTSD and from my traumatic brain injury, because that affects people in a very big way. They can become sensitive to sound or to light. Um, I ended up with a processing disorder and there was a lot that I really couldn't tolerate in the beginning, um, whether it was the dogs or a lot of commotion or just making a lot of decisions at once in one day because I couldn't multitask anymore. And by the end of the day, I really was kind of wiped out because in the beginning, your brain gets really overwhelmed mm -hmm. and um, that's just a common phenomenon. So it, it took a lot 
for our family to kind of get through the beginning and to kind of come to terms with what had happened and to learn to coexist and just to get through, just like any traumatic event that would happen to any family. Yeah. It wouldn't be just this, but you know, you can imagine right. anything <clears throat> that, that would disrupt a family unit. Um, so that's what Greg is kind of referring to. We've talked a lot about um, this type of thing because he went through an accident himself and ended up with a TBI. Mm. So here you had all that going on. And how, how long after that? When did that happen in terms of when you started your business? It was um, a little over a year later. About a wow. Year. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's really remarkable that you had to go through this major life event and, and trauma within a year of starting your business and you still were able to move forward. And I mean, that's, that's really, that's really admirable that you were able to keep moving forward after going through all that. Wow. Wow. It was a decision that uh, was not made lightly. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So what would you say to anybody who is starting a business has this brilliant idea what would you, what, what's the, what's the best advice you can give to somebody that has this, has some sort of idea? Like, like what, what, what can you share with, with the listeners? I think that you just have to be ready for um, a roller coaster ride because there are always going to be things that you cannot anticipate that are going to come your way. It, it wouldn't necessarily be an accident, but there are just a lot of ups and downs. There are a lot of challenges, there is adversity, and you're gonna have to be in it for the long haul. And you need to understand that some days are gonna be great, some days are not. You should listen to some people's advice <laughs> that maybe have been there and done it. And I mean, I, I listened to people's advice, some of it I took, with a grain of salt, some of it I took wholeheartedly. There are people that have, you know, some great advice and can be your mentor. Um, and, you know, there are people that maybe they don't want you to do well, but I mean, you can only let other people's judgment or opinions hurt you if you let it. I mean, growth is also important. So, um, I think it makes us stronger and anything that you go through in life, whether it's good or it's bad, um, it makes us stronger. And so for me, I think that growth is the best, it's the best part of life. And when you face a challenge or something, you know, that like adversity, you have to embrace it. Um, because there's always hope that things can get better to me. I mean, I think hope is like the fertilizer of life and it's, you know, human growth is, is what we all should be doing all the time. You can't stay stagnant because nothing great is ever achieved by staying in the same place. Right. Exactly. And I love the saying, and I've heard this multiple times. I interviewed somebody earlier today for a, another episode. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And you may not always see that in the moment, but if you can embrace the challenge that you're going through and see that it happened for a reason and that you're, you know, at the end of the day, you'll grow from it, that it mm -hmm. happened for you and not to you. Yeah, if you choose not to be a victim, um, I think that's yes. a big part of it. Because for me, I think you can choose to be a victim or you can choose to take control of your life and decide what do you want to do with that experience that you had. Because sometimes it gives you something good out of right. that experience. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cindy, I'm, I'm sorry. 
I was, I was, I looked up at my spreadsheet. I was like, and saw another guest name, Jennifer, is there anything else that you want to share with the audience today that we haven't talked about? Um, just, I think that, um, gratefulness, hope, motivation, these are the best things in life. They're all just really powerful feelings and they propel you. They, they help you to heal and they help you to move forward in life. And we should all hold on to the positive feelings and don't let negativity bring you down. Mm, I love it. I love it. This has been such an amazing conversation. And where can people find out more about you and your clothing line? Um, about me, I have an author website. It's Jennifer Burke Weissman, and it's J E N N I F E R B E R K W E I S M A N dot com. And also on LinkedIn. And the clothing line is Just Bones Boardwear, J U S T B O N E S B O A R D W E A R dot com. And there's also social media, Just Bones BW on Twitter, and we're also on Facebook. Awesome. I will make sure those are in the show notes as well. <laughs> thank so you, thank so you so much. Thank you so much and continued success to you. It's really oh, amazing what so you've much. accomplished. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you for having me today. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> 